Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we look at important scientific ideas and interact with how they advance the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by president and founder of Reasons to Believe, Dr. Hugh Ross, and we're going to ask the question, is Big Bang cosmology in trouble? Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you. So there have been a, a number of studies come out recently that seem to indicate that Big Bang cosmology might be in trouble, or at least that's the claim. And I know some young Earth creationists have hopped on that and said, oh, we need to be careful of Big Bang cosmology. I guess to kind of set the stage, though, can you kind of just basically describe in a brief way, what are the basic features of Big Bang cosmology? Well, the basic features are that the universe has a beginning that includes a beginning of space and time, as well as matter and energy how it continuously expands from this space-time beginning under laws of physics that don't change, or one of those laws is a pervasive law of decay. All those things are actually stated in the Bible, but from a scientific perspective, if you're living in a universe where the laws of physics don't change, where it's expanding, and where you've got this pervasive law of decay, that's a universe that gets colder and colder as it gets older and older. So, so there are kind of these board, four basic features. There's a beginning, there's the constant laws of physics, there's this expansion and the pervasive law of decay. And so, so this particular discovery that is causing the tension or, or raising the, the, the profile of Big Bang cosmology right now is related to the expansion. So kind of give us some details of what is it that is causing people to have a little bit of concern. Well, there was a paper published a couple of years ago uh, based on Cepheid variable stars where they calculated that the expansion rate of the universe based on those stars was 74 uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec. And that was in conflict with a, a result we got from studying the radiation left over from the cosmic creation event, which is actually looking at the very early history of the universe. And based on those maps, uh, concluding that the expansion rate was only 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And in both cases, the inner bars were small. So they said, we got a big discrepancy here. So, so let's unpack that a little bit. So we've got this, the Cepheid variables, which are a type of star that pulse basically. And from the duration of the pulse, you can tell how bright they are, which allows you to tell how far away the stars are. And so they use those to measure what? Well, they measure uh, the radial velocities of these stars, which tells you how fast they're moving away from us. Okay. From galaxies. And if you know the distances to the stars, and because these uh, Cepheid variable stars are, are reasonably good standard candles, you can calculate the cosmic expansion rate. But you're calculating it based on the local universe. Mm -hmm. And this is in conflict with a calculation based on cosmic background radiation maps that indicates a significantly slower cosmic expansion rate. So, so you've got these Cepheid variables, which are measuring the local expansion or, or something more local to us, whereas the cosmic microwave background radiation is measuring the expansion rate very early in the universe history or rather much further away from us. And these two are in conflict. And so, so now with that, uh, so, so with that picture, kind of go back and walk us through the numbers again so we get a scale of what's what, we're, what we're talking about here. Well, based on the Cepheid variable stars in different nearby galaxies, you get an expansion rate of 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, or one parsec is 3.26 light years. Okay. And if you go look at the cosmic background radiation maps, uh, where you're looking at the cosmic expansion rate when the universe is really young, uh, you're getting 67 kilometers uh, per megaparsec, uh, kilometers per second per megaparsec. Yeah, there's some people would say, well, that's not that big a deal. But, uh, you know, if, if you work out the numbers, that translates into a difference in the age, if that's the only thing incorporated. That works out to a difference in age of about a billion years. So this is relatively large discrepancy. Relatively large. And the error bars are quite small on both measurements. Mm -hmm. So this is what's caused some concern. And, uh, you know, people are saying, well, uh, dark energy can explain uh, maybe uh, almost one kilometer per second because dark energy predicts universe will expand more rapidly uh, when the universe is old than when it is young, but it only explains one kilometer uh, per second per megaparsec. Uh, you got another six to deal with, which has caused some scientists to say there must be some hidden physics in the Big Bang that we're missing. 
And then you got Young Earth creationists saying, looks like astronomers have no idea how old the universe is because of how far off these two measurements are, which is why I wrote a blog on this, uh, Jeff, basically saying when something like this is published in the scientific literature, this is usually an indication we're overlooking something. And so I basically point out the things that have been overlooked. And if you pay attention to those three things, you actually can explain the difference between the two measurements. No, I, I think that's very important. And we'll point people towards that blog at the end of the show here. Uh, I would, I do think it's interesting to look at this in a little bit of historical context. I mean, you've been aware of this longer than I have, but even back when I was in graduate school, you know, we're now talking about a difference between 67 and 74. When I was in graduate school, those numbers were 50 and 100. You know, so, so this is not a new thing that we have discrepant measures of the cosmic microwave background. And so in some sense, it seems like this is a vast improvement over where we are, because even back then, the statistical uncertainties were far larger than what, uh, or those, dis those results were very discrepant. Well, back then, we had large uh, statistical uh, errors, and the errors were so large, we didn't even bother to look at the systematic errors. Mm -hmm. Today, the statistical errors are small enough that we're saying, hey, maybe we better pay attention to systematic effects that might be pushing the observations in one direction or the other. And that's kind of what I put on my blog are the systematics that have been overlooked. So kind of final question here, when you see a discrepancy like this, where one measurement of something that's essential to Big Bang cosmology says this, and another measurement says uh, something that's different, um, is this a sign to look and say, well, we don't know what we're talking about, or is there something that this gives us a clue to bigger, bigger and better things in the universe that we can look at? Well, that's the latter, Jeff, in the sense that we have very strong evidence that the Big Bang creation model is correct from looking, say, at the uh, cooling of the universe, the measurements we have there, the helium abundance, the deuterium abundance. Those are all very strong evidences for Big Bang cosmology. And the fact is we can see the galaxies moving away from one another as we look at greater and greater distances. So this is a tip-off that we're overlooking some significant effect. And so that should motivate all of us to say, well, what have we overlooked? And if you actually read the scientific papers, the two that were published, they both indicated that, uh, that the fact that we see this discrepancy means we're missing something. And that's an opportunity to learn something about the universe we didn't know before. That should be exciting to everybody. And I thought, you know, what was really gratifying uh, when I went through the scientific literature is like now we're finding the systematic effects that explain the discrepancy and actually to explain it almost perfectly. Well, thanks, Hugh, I appreciate your comments. You know, it is a common thing in science that when we're looking at how, do, how does something work, we often find discrepant results. And, and as Hugh mentioned, this is an opportunity to explore more deeply and figure out things that we may have not had a window on before. You know, the fact of the matter is, even though there's this discrepancy, there's a whole wealth of data that points to the validity of Big Bang cosmology, and that really points towards a creator. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Hugh's blog on this. It's called Resolving the Cosmic Expansion Anomaly. We'll give you great tools to understand this particular discrepancy and the opportunities it gives us to learn about the universe, as well as equip you to go out and share the gospel with those who need to hear.